Thank you. And this is Elisa <laughs> Sullivan. This is our third installment of our Artist of the Week series. And the best part about this is we're on Cape Cod. Yep. Elisa's from Cape Cod. And I'm so excited to show you her studio where everything happens. I have a couple questions for you, but I figured we'd break the ice. Maybe you can embarrass me a little by telling <laughs> our Giving Tree fans how we met. Um, well, we met, I was in the post office one day, and they were about to close, and uh, I needed to ship some stuff. Rachel was ahead of me in line. Um, I've been a jewelry designer for, like, 12 years, and I knew of the Giving Tree, and I saw the return postage, and I was like, oh, that's Rachel from Giving Tree. <laughs> <laughs> I spotted. <him. laughs> and anyway, she had said, she looked very nervous and I was like it's okay I said we have plenty of time because we're here in line and she said no I forgot my money I don't have any money to pay for the shipping yeah. and um, I was like you know what I have my checkbook here I'd be happy to do it and she's like oh no it's international shipping you don't want to do it I'm like really it's fine so I we did and then she wanted me to come by the gallery um, Obviously, to get paid back for postage, but she wanted me to bring my jewelry in because we got to talking about that, and I did, and Judith and was there as well, and I think they were planning on taking a few pieces on consignment as a thank you, but they ended up Little really liking know. it, and <laughs> they put it online on the website, and it's been a wonderful blessing, so, um, and uh, yeah, I love the store. It's a place I always wanted to have my stuff, but I'm not great at going and selling, so. <laughs> well, this is off topic, but you said you, you've been doing it for 12 years, but don't you also work uh, for, like, a gem company, or you've been in and the world? I've, I've worked for two separate bead companies. Um, I work now for a company out of Maine, and I travel around uh, selling beads at big bead shows. People are surprised to know that there are gem and jewelry shows and bead shows, and there are. There are entire convention centers devoted to just beads so and gems. You and also have access to, like, the best pictures yes. of, the, of the lot. And, yeah. Um, and, yeah, behind Laura, I don't know if you can see. You can go ahead. They're used to the, the shoddy All productions. Right. There we go. Um, you can see some of Elisa's stacks of beads. And So we are in the studio, I should say. This is where it all happens. Yes. And my question to you, one of them, is since this, because, you know, we did... You were making a few things, and then we put things online, and then, boom, explosion. Would you say? I mean, yeah. And now you've taken part in the, quote, contest, which yes. we're selling out, you know, your bracelets. And so how have things changed since Giving Tree's come in? And what's how has your work life changed, your sleeping, because you have a son? Yes. Well, um, luckily, Jacob started kindergarten this year, so he's at school every day for a half day. And uh, that helps. I, I try to do my work while he's at school so that it doesn't interfere too much with him. But um, it's changed mostly that it's given me more direction in what I'm doing. It, it, it gives me more focus to create a comprehensive line. And, you know, the customers also kind of like lead you. Rachel and I have come up with all kinds of awesome ideas just by brainstorming uh, down at the store. And that's been great. So I just, I think the focus and... And the, a place to show some of my the, my newest pieces and, and see the appreciation for them. So. And I think what you said, too, we're very, you know, we love our customers and we have this relationship with them. And they really do, I think, inspire us. You know, we'll find or think of a customer that's looked for something. And you can basically create according to somebody's you know, dream piece or something they need, especially when we're using words. Right. I find that I order a lot of pieces where someone's looking for a specific quote or to celebrate a family thing. And what inspires you? I mean, is this what you want to be doing, the words and the quotes? or? Well, I love to read. I love to read. I listen to books on tape as I'm you do. working. Every Yes, I, I go through about five books a month. Um, and... That, so to combine the words with my work has been such an explosion of inspiration for me and creativity that it just, and that with the colors of the stones and the gems and combining the two and relating the words together, um, you know, like I carry your heart. It's one of my favorite poems by E.E. E. Cummings and 
it's something that I've always, um, a poem when I read it, I always think of my sister. It makes me cry, actually. And I love that poem. And I thought, well, a ruby would be perfect with that. So I love taking the words and combining them in some sort of design in the silver and then combining gemstones with that to reflect what the words say. I and I so, say that became, it's become your signature. I yeah. Think, you know, yeah. Kind of, but yeah, you brought I Carry Your Heart to us. Right. And I know when Elise is really excited about a piece because... She comes down the stairs like, and wearing it, and then I love it. And so, you know, just so people can see, because I think it's really fun for them to understand. I mean, will you show us the stations or how you sure. work or what, um, what's involved? Well, this is where I hammer. I get out of your way. Um, this is where I, um, and what I use to create the words are... Wow. You see the letter stamps in here, and there's all different fonts and then designs. So that's where the stamps are, and then this is where I do all the hammering. And the funny thing about this bench is Michael and I, when um, Michael's, the husband. Michael's my husband, and when we first met in Tampa, um, we moved in together before getting married. <laughs> anyway, so we, had no, it, but we, like, yeah, we had no furniture, so we... I uh, went to a yard sale, and I bought this, this thing for $20, and he was like, why are you getting that? It's just, you know. It's... So anyway, we used it in our kitchen for years and years, so I stuck it in the basement, and I wouldn't let him throw it away. <laughs> and a couple of years ago, I'm like, I need that thing, that butcher block that's downstairs. So It's also a bench of love. I mean, you're creating yeah. pieces of love on right. a bench that came from. That I've had now for 18 years, so it's really cool to have a piece of furniture that... Yeah, I bought it yard sale that I love. So uh, this good thing is not smaller because you seem to use every inch of it. I do, and then I have to clean it. I have to at the end of each day. I have to kind of make more space to start the day again. So, but generally, I seem to look, seem to work in a very tiny area. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm very good about working in a tiny area. But this is where I do all the stamping and the hammering and stuff. And this station that you see over here is where I do my soldering. Um, and my sawing, you can see the bench pen there, and so that's where I do all the cutting, the more. And making. this is that's my uh, Dremel tool, and it's a flex, has a flex shaft on it. Um, and a foot tool? No, it's not. I, I'm hoping to work my way up to that very soon this year. Leave it to us. <laughs> so, and that's what I use for drilling and some polishing. Are you shooting my feet? Yeah, I'm just wondering, is this normal? Is um, barefoot in here? Or? I'm, yes. Being from Arkansas, we're always barefoot. Oh, that's <laughs> but wait, is it true that, don't they have good diamonds? Do we talk about this? Or good stones in Arkansas? They or do. Yeah. They do. Well, there's the Murfreesboro Diamond Mine, which actually my dad took me to when I was little. I was probably like six or seven. Yeah. And we went and dug for diamonds. We did it a wow. few times. So, wow. Yeah, that was fun. So when did you first know you wanted to be a jeweler? Or I loved... Jewelry, I think, forever. I can't think of a time. I think I was, <clears throat> how old? I don't know, probably 9 or 10, and I stole an amethyst ring from my mom's jewelry box. Oh, I thought you were, yeah. No, from, and I, no, from my mom's jewelry box. Yeah. And, I, and I wore it, and then it broke. So she, I had to tell her. And, yeah, I loved jewelry forever. I used to play in all of her stuff. And then um, my aunt on my dad's side had an antique store, and she used to let me rummage through this big box of, of jewelry, yeah. and I would wear it, and, you know, I loved it. I loved jewelry forever, I think.